The title of God's Word I'm going to study with you today is The Power of Prayer. Let's study God's Word together with this subject. Prayer is the key to call on God's power. In order to understand today's subject, the power of prayer, let's take a look at Mark chapter 9. In Mark chapter 9, we can see a scene where Jesus drives out a demon that caused a boy to become mute. When going indoors, the disciples asked Jesus a question. Let's see verse 28. After Jesus had gone indoors, his disciples asked him privately, Why couldn't we drive it out? And what was Jesus' reply? He replied, This kind can come out only by what? Only by prayer. The disciples tried very hard to drive out the demon, but they couldn't do it. As Jesus drove it out, they asked Jesus, Teacher, why is it that we couldn't drive it out, but you could? What is the difference between us? Jesus said, the answer is the prayer. When we see all the deeds of Jesus in the books of the gospel, we can see Jesus start everything with prayer. He started his day with prayer and accomplished every work in prayer. Even at the last moment when he completed the truth of the new covenant, he prayed. Not only can we see the work of prayer of Jesus, but we can also see the prayer of Jonah, which led 120,000 Ninevites to repentance, can't we? When Jonah offered a sincere prayer of repentance, God gave him great power and strength to lead all the Ninevites to repentance. And as for Daniel, whom we know very well of, he prayed three times a day toward Jerusalem. Although some people tried to find fault with him and set a trap to catch him, he did not care. He still prayed earnestly to God every day toward Jerusalem through the open window. As a result, he was thrown into the lion's den, but God shut the mouths of the lions. He was able to experience such a miracle. When we take a look at the works of all our forefathers of faith, we can see that so many works were done through prayer. There is a person who was well known for his patience. Who is he? It is Job, right? Job too overcame a great tribulation and test through prayer. Job and Jonah achieved great works of God by praying hard. And Paul too constantly prayed in his gospel life. Paul regarded prayer as very important. So he said that we must pray always and continually. Apostle Paul led the gospel work regarding prayer as the rope to communicate with God. In Mark chapter 9, Jesus speaks of when he drove a demon out of a boy who was mute. Everything is possible for him who believes. When the disciples came and asked Jesus, Teacher, we tried the same thing, but why didn't it work for us? Why couldn't we do it? Jesus replied, This kind can come out only by prayer. It means the disciples were lacking in prayer. Jesus prayed earnestly from early in the morning. Even when he knew that he would be hung on the cross the next day, he prayed all night long in Gethsemane. What did Jesus say to Peter, waking him up in Gethsemane? Watch and pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. He gave him this warning even three times. Watch and always pray, so that you will not fall into temptation. Prayer brings power to drive away temptations, and also to lead 120,000 Ninevites to repentance. 
What about the prayer of Elijah? When he was confronting 850 false prophets, he prayed and received God's answer through the fire of the Holy Spirit, didn't he? God burned all the sacrifices on the altar built by Elijah. By doing that, he revealed the identity of the false prophets and showed that the Lord God whom Elijah served is the true God. Elijah accomplished all this work through prayer. Everybody, we're given the prayer worship time early in the morning and in the evening during the preaching week of the Feast of Tabernacles. Since all the work of God is done by prayer, we must never take this prayer worship time lightly. Prayer is the way to call upon God's power. In the Bible, we can see so many works accomplished through prayer. So God told us to pray continually. Let's see the words in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16. Be joyful always. And what else should we do? Pray continually. When God tells us that in the Bible, there must be a reason, right? God said, pray continually. The Bible even says that failing to pray is a sin. There are many different types of sins, but in 1 Samuel, it is mentioned that failing to pray is also a big sin. Let's see this teaching in 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 23. As for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord by failing to pray for you, and I will teach you the way that is good and right. Here, we can see that failing to pray is a sin. There are many types of sins in the Bible, and God told us to pray continually. That's why Apostle Paul says in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 16 and 17, Be joyful always, pray continually. Through the Autumn Feast, we are receiving many reports about good fruits being born in various parts of the world. Please ask Heavenly Father and Mother for more blessings through prayer during this prayer week. When it comes to the feast, what do we have for 10 days from the Ascension Day to the Day of Pentecost? We have a prayer week. Once we lift up our prayers, God pours down the Holy Spirit of Pentecost on us as a sign of the Holy Spirit. And in the time of Moses, God granted the Ten Commandments to His people. Also, what do we have for ten days from the Feast of Trumpets to the Day of Atonement? We have a prayer week too. In the time of Moses, God granted the Ten Commandments on the tablets a second time as the sign of forgiving the sins of the people through the prayer week. In this age, God opens the heavenly door and grants us the last path of the truth for this gospel to be preached in Samaria and to the ends of the earth, doesn't he? Prayer is always present before a great work is done. When Hezekiah became ill and was at the point of death, he too prayed to God, weeping bitterly. God said, don't worry, I will add 15 years to your life. Hezekiah received this answer after praying. So God said to us, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Who gave us this teaching? Our God. Let's confirm this in Matthew chapter 7. Don't pray half-heartedly, but with conviction that God gives everything we ask with faith. While living in this world, we face numerous obstacles and difficulties. There are so many things that we, humans, cannot solve. 
I hope that our Zion family members will pray to Heavenly Father and Mother in any situation. Let's see Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Ask, and what will happen? It will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. For everyone who asks, receives. He who seeks, finds. To him who knocks, the door will be opened. Which of you, if his son asks for bread, will give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will give him a snake? If you, then, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Jesus came to this earth 2,000 years ago and gave us a teaching about prayer. Ask, seek, knock. Everyone who asks, receives. Everyone. This is how important prayer really is. However, God doesn't answer any prayer that is offered to test God or offered with a sinful mind or with wrong motives. For that soul that lifts up those kinds of prayers, God does not answer them. However, if it is for righteousness in God, God answers all prayers and opens the door for those who ask with faith. If we knock, the door will be opened. If we ask, it will be given to us. And if we seek, we will find. Let's move on to Matthew chapter 21, verse 22. Jesus said, If you believe, you will what? You will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. However, there is no answer from God if we ask without faith or with a sinful mind or in vain for physical desire. When we pray in obedience to God's will, God answers all our prayers whether it is a prayer of repentance or a prayer asking for power or a prayer to defeat the enemy, God answers all our prayers in His will. I hope that we can all have faith and receive more power of prayer from God during this preaching week of the Feast of Tabernacles. Whatever we do in our daily life, whenever we meet an obstacle, let's think of God. Let us take out the tool called prayer. By this, I'd like to conclude today's sermon. Thank you very much.